So hello everyone. So we meet again today at the same day, same time with a different upcoming movies that we will talk about and discover. We gonna ask them either this good or bad. <laughs> so I am Jack Inspector from Film Locker, and I would like to show to present to you the cast behind the scene of movie Marvel. So please welcome Mr. Hafiq, Mr. Afif, Miss Shafika, Mr. Azizul, and Mr. Shaolong. So give a round of applause. For your guys information, um, me and Mr. Afiq are uh, close guys there actually because we have a uh, cast for drama series Kill Anyone, right? Yes. Kill Anyone, Kill okay. Anyone. <laughs> uh, he became the hero of this movie and I became the cameo for that movie. Uh, and now I meet him again here. Uh, so I appreciate you guys. Thank you for coming, bro. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you, bro. And also, uh, don't forget to our backbone test also, Mr. Zizol, Mr. Shawa, Mr. Faith, and also Mr. Shafika. Thank you for coming, bro. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, okay guys. First of all, we're going to move the first question to my friend here, Mr. Faith. Okay. So, Mr. Faith, I heard that you have been the director, right? For this movie. When I heard that you become the director, I really know that you will make a good movie for the audience to watch, right? Okay, so my first question for you is uh, Tell me what kind of movie is this actually? What kind of name, what the theme, what the title of this movie? Uh, you, you <laughs> let me shine uh, uh, yeah. no So shy, no shy. this is my sixth movie that I have directed So this movie titled as a Marvel About the superhero character from Marvel Studios there is a Kree warrior who finds himself caught in the middle of an intergalactic war battle between his people and the Skrulls. Living on Earth in 1950-50, he keeps having requiring memories of another life as Malaysian Air Force Muhammad Ali that he on the battle with Malay Union on conquer the that attack mission to get the first independence for the country. So with the help from Nick Fury, you know Nick Fury, right? Yes, I know Nick Fury. So Nick Fury, Ma Marvel, Marvel tries to uncover the secrets of his past while harnessing his special superpowers to end the war with the Ever Stars and also the Evan Modok. Oh, I see. That's kind of movie, ah. Uh. Oh, I really heard that it is very good, ah, uh, from the theme that you say. Like I can see they imagine it very fast. So um, basically, it will also more focus on our history, right? Ah uh, yeah, uh, I take a little bit of con uh, history concept on it, and also this movie is different from uh, other movies that I make, which that I put some element of electromagnetism on making this new. Wow, what's a good new element you implement in this movie, right? I really saw that it is also good. The theme, I also can see the electricity, how the Kree. The Mr. Nick Fury also yes. in there. Okay, so um, actually I want to know more about this movie. So can we know the reason why you implemented electromagnetism in this movie? Oh, uh, because uh, as we all know, our life depends on electricity. So, but we do not give give much time, uh, much attention on how it produces and affect our life. So I think by watching this movie outcome, so the audience will under will also understand. A little bit about electromagnetism. Wow, such a brilliant idea from you. You're very good. Okay, oh, I knew it. You're going to do in this movie, right? Yes. Okay, thank so, you so thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. It's so a much. very good answer, and I really like it. I can wait to watch this movie actually. Okay, so I will move to our next, uh, our next question to the next uh, person or uh, crew, which is Mr. Afiq. Okay. Three to one. Okay, so uh, we're going to interview the next uh, crew, which is the producer of this movie. So 
the producer is Mr. Api. So Mr. Api, I have some uh, questions to ask you about this movie. So the first question is, I would like to know how much budget do you use to take this kind of movie? So for the budget of the Marvel film, our big company, which is Swan Production, gave us around one million Malaysian ringgit to make this movie possible. This one million ringgit, including the place uh, to pay the rent, to pay the actor, and also our food. So the next question is, I would like to also know about the locations that you use for shooting this kind of movie. So the place that we chose, very very specific. The first place that we chose is Lahat Datu, which we will we want to make remake the war scene, which from our from the Merdeka, and also the second one is uh, Pulau Pentian to make the fighting scene, and both combine the the budget for this the place that we go is around ten. Thousand, yeah. Okay, uh, this was absolute uh, good answer from you, Mr. Abib. So, uh, the next question is, I would like to ask uh, the expectations of you guys when you have successfully get into the box office of this game. Okay. So, the box office profit that we estimated is for the first three months we expected to to get seventy five percent back. Which is around seventy five hundred thousand Malaysia ringgit. Yes, and it will be divided to our actor, our crew. So the last question is, um, I would like to know why do you choose uh, the local Malaysian actor to be the case for this movie actually? Uh, Yo, so from the poster you can see that I chose Ahmad Alfian as our main character, right? So I choose Ama Alfian because from his previous movie that he act, he have that physical that we want to be Marvel. He also have that serious look, so I think it suit him to be Marvel. So, and we also have Boron Palari to be the Nick Fury, the new Nick Fury. Uh, also we have we features Ma- Michael Yeo. As the doctor that that help Amalfian, Ning Baizura as the Skrull, Hans Isaac, <coughs> and Jack Farikamin, and Jack Defeater, and also Harry Golding, Harry Golding, and there's many actor that will make the cameo on the film. So. Don't forget to watch it. Okay, so we're going to move the questions to the Mr. Alzizo, which is the editor, and also Mr. Shaunong, right? Yeah. Which is the story writer. Yeah. Right? Okay, so uh, I would like to ask you guys also some questions. Okay, the first one is, um, I heard that you guys have proposed a new movie for this year, and I also heard from the netizens that you guys have Change some of the scene from the original one. So I would like to know uh, what kind of change that you guys have made for this movie. Um, before I want to say that, that I am a Captain Marvel fan and all the Marvel kind of movie. Okay, but as a, as a production team, when you look at the Malaysian market, and we can see a large number of audience, they want to see some of the scenes which can they relate to in real life. Science fiction movies, but still some of the scenes that somehow they can relate to it. Therefore, we have made some of the changes, especially from the electromagnetic purposes. So something it looks realistic, and the audience they can have it and enjoy it. So that was the main purpose. So now, can can the production team uh, give us a laptop? Yeah, because um, I want to show some of the scenes that we have collected. Yes, uh, right. I also yeah. have not watched the movie yet. Enjoy it. Okay. Thank you. So for all the production team, okay. uh, we have we have figured out the four scenes with two of them is impossible acts, another one is rational acts, there will be some minor mistakes that can be corrected. But two it does not even relate to the real life. It cannot be implemented. So these are the four scenes we have identified that in our new secure movie we we'll propose a new scenes. 
So, uh, uh, can I show it to you, please? Yes, can you can. I also can imagine what kind of change you have done, actually. Yeah. Oh, I see, I see, I see. And you see that, first of all, when you see this large spark, yes. this large spark, it basically means that it's a very high voltage, a very large electromagnetic field. And this kind of thing is a system. Do we it's not a big protection system or a shell core, so there will be a large flash of a current. So this kind of thing cannot happen in real life, mainly because if you can see that in between of this work, you know, we have two electrodes someone's head it does not make sense because human being or we be standing yes voltage true. is very low the maximum breakdown voltage is 500 volt and then we are putting someone's head in between that kind of uh, high voltage okay. which is not only ratio is impossible so how we are going to make an improvement when we have something like this especially with this kind of scene that they are in the scene they are storing the data so what we are going to do is that something is happening in real life. First of all, these days we see some people, they store the data using the DNA. Yes. So they pick someone's DNA and store the data. Yes. So that's something we are proposing. At the same time, what you're going to do in the sense that this is the setup will be exactly the same, but what are you going to do? We will uh, ground the voltages. So all of this high voltage will be grounded. And secondly, in the in the electric in the in, in the wire, all of them will be shielded. So make sure there will be no electromagnetic interference with the system. Because even in the scene, you see the, in the room the electromagnetic behavior changes when they start to store the data because it, because of the large electromagnetic field, it will interfere in the whole system. So that is the first proposal that we want to make an improvement. We want to make in this movie. Wow, I see, I see. So this is kind of incredible scene that you can see here, yeah. the change uh, that you have made. So uh, this is the first scene, right? That is the first scene, and we would like to have you, have you look at the, the other scenes we have. Yes, done. I like to. Now we have the se second impossible act. Okay. And given the, the Malaysian market and the audience, we, we uh, have proposed to correct it. So let's watch the scene first, then we will decide where we have made improvement and it, it's logical or not. Yeah, enjoy it. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Impossible act because he has been whole time with me during the during the editing sections and That's identifying the that yes. Okay. Yeah, the story writer, he makes sense. Okay, sir. So, yeah. All right, so in, as you can see in the scene, when the Captain Marvel is moving, there is a flashover current or lighting uh, which has, has an impact on the device of Captain Marvel's hand. Uh, as we could see, it lighting, lightning. Uh, therefore, the device is not electromagnetic compatible because it interfered interfere with the close, uh, close set device. Secondly, the human being cannot uh, withstand that amounts of energy in the hand and it will also impact the uh, electromagnetic behavior of the device in the room unless the power of the Captain Marvel is lowered and the filter to make electromagnetically uh, compatible. So how we in, uh, improvement this scene? So we just grounding the elements in case of uh, fighting and uh, lowering the voltage with in the limits human being uh, that can be uh, withstand. Now for the third uh, act we have is actually the irrational act, number one, the irrational, there is minor things we can correct it and we can put it in the scene in the movie, that's what I think is, is somehow it, we can make it work in you know, movie uh, and be realistic. So let's watch the scene first and then we'll see. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. She's trying to break out.
this is something we want to replace. But if we look at in the system that that in the whole room there are some electromagnetic behavior, we can see some change in the, in the door. And, and also we can see that there is it's proving sound means something is, is uh, uh, signal is being is being distorted. So that is electromagnetic interference. And how we are going to mitigate it? We can mitigate it using a filter. We are using filter in the in the in the electromagnetic device to make sure it does not interfere with other devices because we can see that when the spaceship is closer to it, yes. it does impact the entire yes. entire room uh, and the atmosphere. So that is one of the solutions we have, and and the, the scenes will be will be corrected, especially the Captain Marvel, that we would make it. We make it we, we maybe with low power because that's something that we see we are within the capability of a human being that they can withstand. So that's it. And now we look at in the, the last scene, which is called irrational X number two. And this is something we want to correct it as well. And we want to put it on movie. And that would be the last scene that the changes we want to make in our movie in Malaysia. So this is irrational X2. So it is basically is about the case F and I want to show it first. Um, so let's watch it together. Is that it? Cool. In her notes she called it the Tesseract. So my friend Shalom, he explains about it because we have been working in a group and I think better. He would explain it much better than I yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, the tesseract can be uh, touched because it is very high radiation uh, energy. As we could see a uh, reaction when it exposed to human beings. Due to the reaction in exposure to other devices and in its behavior, we could see that the tesseract is not electromagnetically uh, compatible. To have the device protected, we could use high filters so that uh, unnecessary signals will be take, taken care of. Uh, besides, uh, the device could go through uh, emissions tests so that it doesn't interfere. That's the four things we are actually proposing to correct. So two impossible acts, which definitely must be overall, and two rational acts with a minor impact. That would be the, 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 the replacement in the movie and the improvement suggestions from our team. And the, the, something will be seen in Malaysian cinema very soon. Yep, thank you. Thank you. So, hello, Mrs. Shipika. So, you are the costume designer, right? Yes. Okay, so first of all, would you like to share a little bit on the new costume design details for the movie Marvel? Sure, so I have come up with a new costume design that looks a little bit different like before this. It is more on focusing with the design that can help the Marvel to become more stronger in the war zone. There are a lot of innovation related to the electromagnetic in the costume design that I had brought into this new Marvel movie. Okay, um, thank you for sharing about the costume design uh, today. So, uh, next question, would you mind to share with us what is the innovation that related to the community concept? Yeah, sure. So, in the new costume design, I had come up with the idea to make him wearing a suit that is made of the leather backed with a stretchy fabric. The elements that I had add on that inspired from the electromagnetic concept is the cap part. For the cap part, I had designed it as a deflector back shield. It is made to protect our hero from any attack of enemy from behind. It will deflect certain kinds of energy that come from behind. The denser the plasma, the higher the frequency of electromagnetic radiation, the laser blast will be deflected. So at the end, it will be our hero that will become that will win any battle since he is becoming more stronger. Whoa, uh, sounds like a cool idea. Huh? Okay, uh, I see that. So, um, I thought not all heroes wearing cap, right? Yeah, that's true. Not all heroes wearing cap, but our hero is wearing cap to become stronger than others. Oh, I see. Nice, nice. So, is there any other element that you put into the costume design? 
Yes, there are some more. For others element, I had inserted a pair of shoulder shield that made of super strong alloy which it can withstand with extreme impact and temperature. Others, I have also put the powerful glove that made from the most strongest conductor materials that can produce fire photonic blasts from his hands. Oh nice, there are so many elements that can be put into the costume design to help the heroes. So like your director state that this movie have a concept of EMI. That is all of the components that you had mentioned on undergoes the EMI. Yes, of course. We had our components all undergoes the EMI test, especially the power gloves to ensure that we can minimize the possibility of any emission that produce from this all component that interfere with other electronic product. Wow, uh, that is a good thing actually. So if we are not being responsible to the tools that we had used, who will be the responsible for that, right? Okay, so that's the end for our talk today. So nice job from all the kids in the scene of Marvel movies. Okay, I uh, give a round of applause. So, um, don't forget to watch it on 20 October, right? Yeah. 20 October. As always, lock your date, your place, and enjoy the movie. So I think that's all from us today. My name is Jack Spector, and thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you.